This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Babbel and by Factor. So it's now been a little over a week since the tragic death of Elizabeth II. By the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith. Uh, that is her full title, by the way, and it would be disrespectful to call her simply Queen Elizabeth II or Her Royal Highness. And around here, we're all about respect. What's her last name? Windsor. Although, funny story, they kind of made that one up. Yeah. They just chose a very English sounding name because their old last name sounded very German. Ah, yes. And uh, that became a problem uh, at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, some people, you know, we I think we've been very respectful over this past week and a half. Some people disagree, though. What uh, better way to send someone off than with laughs? Yeah, some people, some people feel that our coverage thus far of this global tragedy has not been respectful enough. And, I said it was sad that an old lady died. And, and for that, we are incredibly sorry. Like, I have no problem with you mourning. For example, here's a comment that we got on a recent video that really made me pause and reassess. I wonder if they thought the sadness and admiration from the death of Nelson Mandela was also cultish. The Queen was a national icon who has been the most stable part of Britain for 70 years. To see her gone is a big thing for a lot of people as the Queen has always been there and now she's not. Most people are somber about it and want to pay their respects to someone who deserves it. Yes, there are those who are too into the royal family, but so what? I understand you like to make jokes a lot, but it's still rude when you are disproportionately covering it, using her as the butt of your jokes wherever you can, not really taking the situation from multiple sides. She was a national treasure, which I'm sure you have felt bad about when your country lost one of yours. Uh, on that last point, not really. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, look, fair points all around. We are being respectful today. Um, you're right. Commenter Liz was basically the Nelson Mandela of the UK, if you really think about it. If you think it. about it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few minor differences, like how Nelson Mandela was democratically elected to his role in South Africa's government and grew up as a second-class citizen under the, one of the most racist governments in history and spent 27 years in prison after bravely fighting to dismantle that racist government. Ignore all that. They're pretty similar, though. Yeah. Their faces are both on money. I know who both of them are. Yeah. Yeah. And as for that point about how we would feel similarly devastated about an American national treasure dying, well, unfortunately, we are going to have to disagree with you there. And use that as an opportunity to reread one of our favorite headlines of all time. Are we supposed to take out Spider-Man and SpongeBob? Iranian cleric mocks U.S. and says Tehran can't strike back at targets of Soleimani's stature because America only has fictional heroes. And sadly, it's true. They got us. Yeah. Unlike the UK or South Africa, the people on our money all died like 200 years ago. Yeah. Um, again, uh, one Sorry. of the comments was like... R.I.P. Alexander Hamilton. Well, I, making fun of the line, just like, oh, you don't want to witness history? And it's like, yeah, and look, look, I love history. Big history buff. I've been to numerous historical sites and museums. Yeah, would I walk by and be like, you know what? Yeah, I'll go look at Buckingham Palace if I'm in London. I'm not going to stand in line for 12 hours to see a coffin. America figured this shit out back in, like, the 1860s. They they loaded up Lincoln onto a fucking train car. They drove which, him around. And they just drove his body across the country. And people would line up next to the tracks. They'd Hi, Norman. There's a dog here. Yeah. Show the dog. Norman, say hello. Let yeah. the people see the dog. He's very rambunctious. He misses his mommy. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, we, we solved this. You, you, put, you load the corpse onto a train car. Mm -hmm. Take it around and, the country uh, so everyone can pay their respects by waving. Yeah. No lines necessary. We, mm -hmm. Technology has solved this problem yeah. many, many years ago. Back when Victoria was your queen. Yes. Ow. Ow. Anyway, fine. She was your queen, and, and God help anyone who dared to disrespect your queen. So we will try our best to proceed with all of our UK news today with the proper degree of respect for what the royal family represents to the people of the United Kingdom and to all of the other members of the Commonwealth of Nations. Oh, wait, hold on. Well, okay, regarding those Commonwealth Nations, I am getting word that at least one of them is, uh, quote, kind of over this Commonwealth shit and uh, was sort of only still doing it for grandma's sake. But yeah. now she's dead. So can we move on, please? Mm -hmm. I believe those were the exact words that were just piped into my ear. And that nation is Canada. America's hat, where a poll following the death of Elizabeth found that only 35% of Canadians want to remain a constitutional monarchy, while 44% oppose it. And that just 24% want King Charles on their money versus 56% <laughs> who are against it. 
Among people aged 18 to 34, the results were even more skewed, with just 22% wanting to remain a constitutional monarchy versus 54% who would like to move on now, please. <laughs> Uh, clearly, the key takeaway here is simple. Canadians are rude, and they lack respect. Yeah. Those damn rude Canadians. It was... Uh, Very disrespectful. They should all be thrown in jail. The uh, Back when Queen Elizabeth was alive, it was the most loving nation. Very nice. Always saying thank you and please. Yeah. After she was gone, they turned into... This is ruffians. why they need the royalty. Yeah. You take away the royalty, all of the Queen's subjects, they start getting... They t start taking on airs. They think they're hot shit. Mm -hmm. You need the queen around, so anytime open, anyone opens up their wallet, they're like, oh, there she is. No, it looks ridiculous. That suit is made of denim. So what they what they need to do to restore the dignity of the Commonwealth nations is they need to drill it into everyone's heads. Uh, the, the, the Archbishop of Canterbury needs to come out and say, look, just because she de she's dead doesn't mean she's not watching everything you do. Every time you jerk off, and you don't do anything bad. Old Liz is up there. Shaking her head. That is her version of heaven. So don't do anything you wouldn't want the ghost of Queen Elizabeth II to see you do it. Because she is a voyeur through and through. She is. Yeah. She had little peepholes in all the walls of Buckingham Palace. <laughs> she was the, the inspiration <laughs> for the, uh, the eyes behind <laughs> <Yes>. the artwork. <laughs> uh, but meanwhile, over in Australia, a lot of people are also they're having a laugh. They're saying they should put Steve Irwin on the money instead of Charles, which is extremely disrespectful. And everyone's saying this should be in jail. But, <laughs> I mean, what else can you expect from the country that the UK shipped all of its riffraff off to? You throw these people in jail, they're going to be like, oh, feels great to be home. Put them on the money. Steve Irwin, yeah, he's a national, Australian national treasure, but you bogans need to grow up. You need to understand why it would actually be better for the money to have a guy on it who isn't Australian and mm -hmm. also lives as far away from Australia as is physically possible without going to space. Yeah. That's the guy you need on your money. <sighs> but enough about the Queen's ungrateful Commonwealth subjects. Let's check in on the real ones back home in Britain, the ones who have taken this news the hardest. When you're mourning the death of your queen, you set aside everything else in your life. And I, I mean everything. Uh, do you use a bicycle to get around town? Well, uh, that's a, a little disrespectful, old chap. And uh, any bicycles left on this here bike rack at any point in the next two weeks are getting taken off to the junkyard. It's a royal period of mourning, after all, goddammit. And if you want to ride a bike, go move to the Netherlands. Yeah. Take your best girl for a ride on the bike while carrying a baguette and some beautiful flowers. Yeah. A lovely people. Very disrespectful. Cyclists should all be thrown in jail. But aside from random bike racks being closed to due to national mourning, uh, football, the sport that we Yanks refer to as soccer, was halted for several days following the Queen's death because it's hard for people to focus on mourning when the footy is on the telly. Uh, meanwhile, other sports like horse racing, cricket, and rugby also postponed games, except, oh wait, I'm getting word that no, they didn't. Just football for some reason. And to be clear, this was a decision made by the UK's football authorities and not something decided by royal decree. But when two amateur level football teams decided to just play some football anyway, it was as if they had pissed directly into the Queen's coffin. Mm -hmm. uh, here's Sky News. Two football teams who played the weekend after the Queen died are being investigated and will be, quote, dealt with in the strongest possible <laughs> terms. They're going to execute these people. Yeah, off to uh, the tower. Uh, the rebuke at the despicable behavior came from a local league in Sheffield that had ordered all matches be canceled as a mark of respect. Sheffield International FC tweeted on Friday that its match would be played as a friendly instead, but later said someone had snitched on us, so now even the friendly is off. It switched to a training session, adding, if that gets canceled, we'll have a game of rugby, seeing as that's deemed respectful enough. The team seemed to be referencing the fact that sports such as cricket and rugby went ahead after the Queen's death, while nearly all football matches were postponed. However, on Saturday morning, Sheffield International FC tweeted a picture with the caption, Silly Billies, everyone's turned up in their match kit. A few minutes later, another image showed them shaking hands with their opponents. Oh wow, Byron House have arrived. Fancy seeing them here. The club tweeted. <laughs> so they're not even trying to hide it. They're just oh, like... It's so, I mean, what are the chances that the, these two teams are going to show up, kitted out, ready to play soccer? I mean, well, obviously we can It would be a can't. waste of time and energy to do anything but have the yeah. full-fledged soccer I think match. the Queen, having seen this miracle that's taking place here on the pitch today, would want to see us play through. I might even say that she constructed it. Yeah. From heaven. Because how else would such a chance... Yeah. Meeting take place. Dead uh, monarchs, like saints, they can do miracles. Mm -hmm. And this is a miracle. Much like how magnets work. <laughs> so the actual tweets from uh, Sheffield International FC, um, 
they're great. But they've also been deleted. The whole account's been deleted because, uh, I, I guess, probably because so many people were yelling at them for the profound disrespect that they showed to Her Royal Highness by kicking a ball around at the park. And in case we need to clarify, this is not Sheffield uh, United that we're talking about. This is uh, Sheffield International, who, based on their Facebook page, are literally just a bunch of local blokes who, as of a month ago, were using social media to try and recruit a goal goalkeeper. Mm -hmm. uh, they're literally, they play down at the park. It's, this is like a local men's league. It's fine. <laughs> um, this was not a sanctioned match. It was literally just Sheffield International and another team competing for fun with nothing on the line. How dare they? Oh, my uh, work softball league isn't playing their game tonight because George H.W. Bush <laughs> died. We should do that. <laughs> that sh you know, if, I, if we lived in a real country, uh, we would have all stopped in our tracks when our favorite president, George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, died. Yes. So we could honor the man Yeah. for all the things he did for this country, like saying, read my lips and assassinating John F. Kennedy. Look it up. <laughs> Nevertheless, why was he in Dallas on that day? Why can't he remember why he was there? <laughs> Nevertheless, both teams are in big trouble with their league, who issued a very strongly worded statement calling their actions despicable <laughs> and saying that they'll be dealt with in the strongest possible terms. Execution. Same fate as those bikes that are locked up downtown. Yeah. Oh. oh, no. Shit. Norman. God damn it. Norman knocked over our audio recorder, and we did not notice until later that the levels changed. So for now, we switch to our backup microphone. We apologize for the drop in quality. Quote, Queen Elizabeth II ruled, served, and led with integrity and humility for more than seven decades. It is a terrible shame that these two teams could not emulate this even for a single Saturday, despite our clear instructions. Well, out of respect for Her Royal Highness the Queen, we have to agree. Jail these men. Jail them. Yes. Put them in the tower. It's the only way they will learn. With all the bicycles. Yeah. You just ripped all the audio out, didn't you? You did. We had to start over, didn't we? We did. You're you're lucky you're so cute. <laughs> anyway, meanwhile, like we said, cricket matches continued as scheduled, but they still found ways to show their respect. Uh, for example, an international cricket match between England and India went on as scheduled just two days after the Queen's death, but the Indian team was told not to play any music in their locker room. So that's exactly what they did. No, like good, like good royal subjects of the Commonwealth, they... Turned that music down. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't fully understand the reasoning behind this. Maybe Liz wasn't a fan of music. But in our opinion, anyone listening to music during a time like this should be put in jail. Unless it's Elton John. Sir Elton John. Uh, well, actually, uh, the Queen really doesn't like Elton John because he made that song about Princess Die. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh. he was uh, a little, you know. <laughs> you know what the Queen would love? People bringing those purple Beanie Babies to her, uh, all of her... <laughs> flower arrangements and stuff. They said no Paddington, but they didn't say no Princess Diana Beanie Baby Bears. Ugh. But while, of course, uh, some forms of enjoyment are unacceptable during these sad times, others, like the sale and consumption of illegal hard drugs, are okay as long as you properly acknowledge the Queen's passing. An article from Vice provided multiple examples of how the UK's drug dealers paid their respects <laughs> to the Queen immediately following her death. Um, there's this one, where a text from a drug dealer lists all the drugs available and their prices before writing, The Queen's dead discount on everything. Ask me for details. <laughs> <laughs> then there's this one. <laughs> Are you feeling upset or feeling down with the sad news about the Queen's death? Then don't hesitate to contact me. I'm about until 1 a.m. In tribute to the Queen, who was 96 years old at, at her time of passing, I will reduce the price of one gram Bolivian flake to 96 pounds tomorrow and Saturday, guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what the Queen would have wanted. Mm -hmm. This is like when the weed stores here in California give you a discount for 420. I mean, now I wish she had died sooner, which is horrible to say, but the Bolivian flake would have been even cheaper. Yeah, and you, you just went to a music festival a couple weeks ago, and it would have been great timing. Exactly. <laughs> I don't even know what Bolivian flake is. Neither do I. I'm mean, assuming it's like Bolivian flake. It was a flake of something? It could be know. weed. Yeah, I don't know. The UK, no uh, the drug terms, you know, I haven't been there in so long. Yeah. I don't know all they call the, it like the lingo. Gear. They got all sorts of different words. And they put tobacco in with their weed marijuana joints. <laughs> that shit'll send you for a loop, I tell you what. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Yeah. He's gonna give you a vertigo. Uh, in a message from another dealer who Vice says sells everything from LSD and Xanax to magic mushrooms and cocaine, uh, they wrote, 
Unfortunately, yesterday we was all shocked and saddened by the announcement of Her Majesty's death. We will all mourn the loss of the greatest monarch ever, the most loved, the most revered, the most respected queen, Elizabeth II. Rest in eternal peace, our queen. Heart emoji, UK flag emoji, UK money emoji. During this time of national mourning, we are still operating a full service, so please feel free to contact us. Heart emojis. Imagine your plug sending you that. Look, a discount is a discount. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this guy's not even offering a discount. He's just saying, look, I know a lot of things are shut down, but uh, we are essential. This is an so, essential service. Yeah. 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 Well, it's good. You know what? I'd feel comforted at that time. Yeah. I'd be like, at least my dealer's looking out for me. If I died alone in my in my apartment, someone would find me because my dealer would be like, hey, this guy's not even replying back to the queen text. Yeah. It's nice to have that sense of normalcy. Yes. And comfort and security, mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. Tradition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, probably our favorite one of the bunch is, of course, a bunch of crown emojis. Yo, 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 RIP to our Liz. She's with our die now and all that. Uh, Got the King Charlie ready for you all, and I'm all about all weekend. Bunch of mind-blown emojis. (laughs) RIP to our Liz. She's with our die now and all that. Yeah. Got the King Charles. Yeah, Uh, they should have sent that uh, warthog mind-blown emoji. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, anyways, um, one of the best ways that we've seen the people of the UK honor their queen was the supermarket chain Morrison's doing one of the few things in their power to convey the sense of mourning that they feel as a UK brand. Uh, they turned the volume down on the beeps that their checkout scanners make when the cashier scans. Oh, she hated those beeps. Yeah. It's what the queen would have wanted. I mean, probably. Yeah. I'm not sure she ever had to step foot in a supermarket at any point in her life to, well, she definitely never bought her own groceries. She might have been in a supermarket at some point, but regardless, she would surely have been annoyed at that all that ghastly beeping. Ketchup? What is that beeping? Catsup. Why must it beep? Ketchup? Catsup. Why can't the market have a trumpeter? <laughs> Blow on his bugle every time an item is scanned. Pardon me, shopper. Do you know I could find some Queen O's? <laughs> oh, your majesty, we stopped carrying Queen O's years ago. <laughs> well, I want my Queen O's now. <laughs> Tough shit. Uh, anyways, the Queen's funeral is happening on Monday, and basically the entire country will be shut down for that day. Didn't stock up on toilet paper. Have some respect and hold in that turd. Yeah, come on. Uh, need to go to the hospital for a sudden emergency? Well, that's very inconsiderate of you. The funeral will reportedly involve the biggest national security operation in the UK since World War II. So, that's cool. Uh, because more than 70 world leaders and hundreds of other dignitaries from around the world will all be in one place at one time. Safe. Uh, London is going to have snipers on every roof and will basically be under martial law during the funeral service. But until then, anyone who shows up can stop by and pay their respects to the presumably very ornate box containing uh, containing the Queen's earthly remains. Yeah, and you can't even see her. They didn't do a glass coffin like Lenin? No. No, they did not mummify her like Lenin. They, they did that to Stalin too, but they hid him away after Khrushchev took over. He's like, all right, you've all seen We've seen enough. Let's, we're putting Stalin in the freezer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just a coffin with like, I think it's got a big, it's got some sort of big blanket on or something. So you can't even see her. There could, it, But you're within the presence of it. There could be a bunch of rocks in there. Her body, and like uh, someone did, there is a, a conspiracy, like a kind of half joking conspiracy theory, but it's like, if her body's been in that thing this whole time, like, how is it not rotting? Oh, it's well, not refrigerated. Maybe it is, but people are like, there's no reason for her to be in there. No one's checking. It it probably is climate controlled. Uh, second of all, like once a uh, mortician gets to a body and does their uh, essential magic, yeah. uh, it can keep for quite a long she, time. She's a wax figurine. They're very good at what they do. I literally yeah. just finished a book about this like a month ago. Oh, I also didn't know this. All the living and all the dead. Great Side book. note again, and, and I might be wrong about this, but I think it's true. Uh, Philip did not receive an actual burial. Mm. He's been in a fucking storage container yeah. this whole time because he has to be buried together with his wife. Yeah, if you keep it, uh, if if everything is done correctly and you keep them on ice, it you can go a very long time. People like keep bodies from unsolved crimes for over a year. Yeah, uh, it's just isn't, crazy. Isn't, what's his name still uh, in a cooler? John McAfee. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, because he so, hasn't been claimed. But uh, so this is good news for Philip. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to uh, see a dead queen. And, uh, well, there is a catch, and the catch is that in order to get close to that box, you're going to have to wait. And this ain't no Disneyland ride. It ain't even New Year's Eve at Times Square. People are standing in line for up to 24 hours to see the queen's coffin. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, the official official end of the line is about five miles from the start of the line, uh, from the or the front of the line. But uh, people are so desperate to say goodbye to their queen that despite an official announcement that the queue was at capacity and was being paused, uh, people just kept on lining up anyway. God knows how long that line is. You take now. down all of us. Uh, also, this is a, a this is the problem. This is more of that uh, different class of people. There's definitely a lot of British people that got the fast pass and not everyone was allowed access to it. Yeah. And then you're standing there waiting to see the queen and you see a bunch of people in suits walking by, cutting you in line. It's very frustrating. I think that did happen. I'm Although, sure it did. Also, I would, I would bet money. I haven't even looked it up, but I would bet money that there's people... There's there's a merchandise stand for visiting the queen. Oh, absolutely! In, I mean, in her coffin. Like you know, it's like when you leave a, a concert. There's all those dudes on the sidewalk. They're yeah. not. They don't work for the band. They're there just might be official royal merch, though. I, uh, I don't there know. There might be. I but yes, there's definitely bootleggers. Yeah. with trash bags. This is a queen. Shirt. Tremendous business opportunity. Yeah. You've got a bunch of royalty stands all just queued up. Also, with just nowhere like, to go. Go sell things in the very long line that people need, like yeah. water bottles, beer, water bottle. That's gonna be ten pounds. Sorry, you know, inflation. Also, what are you? What the fuck are you gonna do about it? Oh, we're ha! disrespectful when you show up to see the queen in her coffin and it looks like a fucking football tailgate. Yeah. <laughs> like, whoa, 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 who are we? We're all bad. Come on. Yeah. Anyways, a line of this size, it obviously is going to have an abundance of logistical issues, not just for the London Metropolitan Police, but also for the people who queued up. I mean, what, you show up and you're like, uh, this mass of people, I guess I just I keep guess I walking. Just wait. Yeah. Uh, presumably, people who show up in groups are taking turns to leave and go find a bathroom and also to go grab some food. But we also simply have to assume that at least a few of these people are diapered up. Yeah, 100%. A lot of them are pretty old, so that's probably not out of the ordinary for them, but uh, there are almost certainly people in that line who purchased adult diapers for the first time in their life specifically for this occasion. And and again, I would like to, I, I wonder if anyone's tracking uh, to see if sales of adult diapers uh, went up, spiked That'll in the London metropolitan area. But also, week. like, you know, you're coming at us. You're coming at us. And you're the one who is meeting the queen for the first time in shit-filled underwear. <laughs> yeah. So, like, Who's disrespecting who? I am not getting any... I'm giving the queen her space. Yeah. You are pulling a, a stench behind you with your filled pants <laughs> through uh, this whole area. Yeah. Also, thousands of people are sleeping on the street, uh, and it's not exactly freezing, but it's certainly a, a little chilly at night. These people are absolutely debasing themselves <laughs> just to get a look at a box. I get it. I, look, me personally, I get it. I get the whole history thing. I like seeing historical things. I think it's something I would be interested I in. I got up early for the Rose Parade once. But I would not wait 20 hours in line. <laughs> no, absolutely fucking not. I'd get, a, I'd get a good sense of the vibe. And I'd go, okay, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, this is like this is like the kind of shit that... Not, not to keep beating this horse, but like... It's like, oh, you know, in Soviet Russia, it's like everyone came out to see Lenin's body or whatever. And like the American version is like, all these people, they're only doing it because if they don't go, like they'll be publicly shamed and maybe even arrested. And it's like in the UK, they don't even need the threat of arrest. People are just so, uh, uh, dare I say, cucked by their uh, sort of monarchy system that they'll gladly just uh, be homeless for a day to look at a, a box with a dead body in it. We've Sorry, all, that was disrespectful. We've all waited for very dumb things. Yeah. Yeah. Like the time I waited to get on the new Star Wars ride at Disneyland. Well, it was a cool ride. It's, it, that was actually worth it. Yeah. You're doing a lot more than looking at a casket. Yeah, you get to like actually, you get to control the show. Feels like you're part of the movie. Yeah. I mean, if they, if they had some... Uh, you, you know, it's the most recent movie, so actually I don't want to be a part of it, but... Uh, if Liz's coffin had like some sort of like VR experience next to it, maybe worth it. I don't know. Put on this Oculus Rift and then you can like... It's Beat uh, Saber to like the music from Jubilee. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, again, hopefully... It's the biggest news in the world. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry. He's, it's the biggest news sorry. in the world. That's why we're talking about it. And I I understand why Also, I think we've been very respectful. I think so too. We haven't gone above and beyond on anything. Yeah. I would never want to insult the good people of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Watch the clip that's going around that talks about literally Harry's experience with the Queen and the rest of his royal now family. Now is not the time, Ricky. Now is not the time. The interview, I think it was on like Apple or something, but it's on YouTube and, and Twitter. But the story of him first like introducing Meghan Markle to his family to 
So how nice dark times. do you think that child's gonna be? Is this? I know it's hard to like. Exactly what shade of brown are we thinking? Here? It's hard to be like, oh, I feel bad for a royal family member, but like, dude, this poor guy and his poor wife yeah. who almost turned into his poor mother. Well, Ricky, that's very disrespectful, and you should be in jail for bringing that up. Anyways. Yeah, I hope every, but I hope who, I hope the the wheelers and dealers who went down to the Tesco and filled up a, a cooler with a bunch of ice cold waters. Some Carlsbergs. Yeah, and sold that shit for a huge markup. I hope they, they got fucking paid. Yeah. Because that's what the queen would want. The royal family is all about amassing that wealth through exploitation. And, uh, you know, you, that, you're never going to be in that position, but for, for this week... With a, a credit card, a cooler, some ice. You too you, can be an entrepreneur. You can rack it up. You can do a little do a little bit of imperialism yourself. I'd love to see that business on Shark Tank. We'll explain your business. I show up to horrific events and yeah. provide people with uh, meals and water, but they have to pay for it. Yeah. Yeah. But they have no other choice but to use my services. I do surge pricing on uh, Humans. Es- essential goods yeah. to people <laughs> who, are, who are stuck in 24-hour lines waiting to view the coffins of dead monarchs. Yeah, and the best part is, they look worse than I do, so it's not even scummy. Anyways, a few more details about the death of Her Royal Highness, Queen Elizabeth II. Peace be upon her name. Mm -hmm. Uh, If you were wondering about all those corgis that Liz used to have, well, good news. The rumors about all of them being ritualistically put down are untrue. Those short-legged dogs, they're in good hands. Uh, Elizabeth's son, Andrew, is going to be taking care of him. Oh, cool. Yeah, which it works out great because Andrew, he doesn't really do the whole royal thing anymore. So he's got plenty of time to properly care for these these very special dogs. Um, why was it again that he stepped away from royal duties? I, I'm in such grief right now that I, I simply cannot recall mm. what the circumstances of that were. Um... In any case, here's Prince Andrew copying a feel on his own daughter while laying some flowers for his late mom. What a but a cool guy. A very strange place to grab. Also, yeah, I'm sure they were just like, Prince Andrew's going to the farm with the corgis. Yeah, with the Joe Biden's dog. Uh, major, major is going <laughs> to fight. He's going to turn these corgis around, and you're going to see some shit. I, I, I love your idea that Dark Brandon needs to bring Major back. And have him on a, a chain. Oh, so he just, did a few people. Just Big have deal. him, every time he's doing a speech, Major's just like... Biden just comes out yelling at anyone who gets it's close. It's like your dog here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Norman, Norman's just, he's just got a little bit of that doggy ADHD. <laughs> You're not going to hurt anyone, are you? Named dog? after the famed painter Norman Rockwell. Tried to get this guy's teeth clean. They sent him back. <laughs> nope, too he's far gone. too antsy. Yeah. You got to put, I got to take it to a place where they uh, give him some doggy CBD or something. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, you know about how, uh, you know, aside from all this Queen stuff, the, the citizens of the UK are dealing with a bit of a crisis with the cost of goods and energy. I mean, it's really hitting their wallets hard. So you'll obviously be happy to learn that King Charles will be paying exactly nothing <laughs> in estate taxes on his inheritance from his mother. You see, non-royals in the UK, they pay a, a standard 40% tax rate on in- inheritances above £325,000. But assets passing from a sovereign to their successor are, of course, exempt. Thank God. This is all thanks to a law passed back in 1663. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> Got our numbers mixed up. This law was passed in 1993. Well, it's tradition. That is tradition, baby. <laughs> As uh, is tradition. Yeah. Hey, whew. Mom, you're getting kind of old. You think we should do something about this uh, whole losing half of our wealth thing? Norman. Ooh. In any case, it is a good law, uh, and anyone who disagrees should be in jail because the the royal family said that it is good. Yeah, and that's that's all we. Can this is about. no time to be discussing, you know, the ins and outs of uh, you know UK tax law. Hi, puppy. You read. I'll I'll play with the dog. All right. Anyways, we've got the headlines half of the show coming right up, but first, in honor of Her Royal Highness, this episode is sponsored by Babbel, where you can learn languages. You, if you're like El us, Pero is muy loco. <laughs> Pero está muy loco. <laughs> Calmate. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, if you're like us, there's a foreign language that you regret not learning in school or not continuing to learn once school was out. But it's never too late to start with Babbel or pick up where you left off all those years ago. Babbel is the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions. Thanks to Babbel's addictively fun and easy bite-sized language lessons, you can finally cross learning that new language off your list. With Babbel, you only need 10 minutes to complete a lesson. So you can start having real-life conversations in a new language in as little as three weeks. Other language learning apps use AI for their lesson plans, but Babbel...
Babbel lessons were created by over 150 language experts, and they're voiced by real native speakers, not computers. Their teaching method has been scientifically proven to be effective, and with Babbel you can choose from 14 different languages including Spanish, French, Italian, and German. Plus, Babbel's speech recognition technology helps you to improve your pronunciation and accent. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. In addition to lessons, you can access podcasts, games, videos, stories, and even live classes. Plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language learning journey today with Babbel. Right now, get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash weird. That is B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash weird for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel! Language for life. This episode is also sponsored by Factor. What do you think of when you think of fall? If what comes to mind to you is a packed schedule, well, good news. Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery will keep you fueled up and feeling good no matter how crazy your days and nights get. Whether you need a quick lunch or a nutritious meal that's ready in minutes, Factor makes it easy, and it's cheaper than takeout. And that's a serious win. It's a W. Factor is the perfect mealtime solution for an on-the-go lifestyle. They are fresh, never-frozen meals that are delivered ready to heat and eat in two minutes so I can fuel up fast and get on with my day. Factor now offers 30 plus meals per week and 36 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, and more to keep me going no matter what's on the schedule. And that that juice is damn good. Mm -hmm. Uh, Factor is cheaper than takeout, seriously, and thanks to their commitment to ingredients with integrity, you can actually feel good about what you're eating every day. When things get extra busy, Factor is flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week or pause or reschedule your deliveries at any time. Not only does Factor offer fast, simple solutions when I need them most. They also help me stay on top of my goals when it's hard to carve out time. With offerings like Protein Plus and Keto, I can stay on track without a lot of extra work. Factor has endless options, however you like to eat. Choose from Keto, Calorie Smart, Vegan and Veggie, and Protein Plus to get chef-crafted, dietitian approved recipes that you'll look forward to every time. Now, not only do Factor Meals save me time, they also keep me satisfied. Their chef-crafted recipes are packed with restaurant-quality flavor. It's so good, I almost can't believe it's dietitian approved Factor equals free time. Instead of spending those precious hours after you get home hustling around the store and the kitchen, they'll deliver ready-made meals right to your door, eliminating all that meal planning, prep, and cleanup time. So head to go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird130 and use code weeklyweird130 to get $130 off across six boxes. That is code weeklyweird130 at go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird130 for $130 off. All sponsor links down in the description. You can click on very easy. Very easy. And this is where we finally noticed the audio levels being too high and fixed them, sort of. All right, let's get into the weirdest, wildest headlines from around the world this week, starting with... A little bit of an update here. Yeah. Cam site offers Hans Niemann $1 million to play chess nude to prove he didn't cheat. I would assume that this is an unregulated chess match uh, well, and he, isn't taking place he, at a Grandmaster tournament or something. That's the thing. He can't find a regulated chess match. Right? No one wants him because of the allegations. But... If he goes on this, and it's it's a campsite, it's called like strip cam. Like mm-hmm. it's not one I've ever seen referred to before. But they are not offering, in my Rolodex. Not in my Rolodex. Yeah. Uh, they are offering him one million dollars. Um, I'm. I would take it. They they didn't clarify, you know, whether uh, <laughs> whether they would really need to like check that his uh, orifices were uh, free of any devices. Because I feel like that. I would, I would imagine they just put him in like stirrups. And have him play chess like that. Yeah, I don't know. Some kind of reclining uh, um, table. But uh, yeah, it's an exciting offer, especially if this guy's chess career is its in limbo right now. So quick mill to, uh, you know, prove his haters wrong. Yeah. Two birds with one stone, I'd say. If you knock over his chess piece, it starts vibrating like crazy in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can even move the chess pieces. <laughs> Glink. You, ha- do, you have to play with your ass. Yeah. If I had a fucking dildo up my ass... Could I do this? Could I do this? No. Especially not with that bishop. Very Mm -hmm. tall. Wouldn't have fit. So there. Pennsylvania woman accused of stealing Pelosi's laptop allowed to visit Renaissance Fair again. (laughs) It was so good. You guys don't understand. I got to go back. Listen, once, you know, my court date comes up, you can do whatever the hell you want with me for uh, definitely 100% unequivocally breaking into the U.S. Capitol and stealing Nancy Pelosi's laptop. Just let me have this one chance. But look... If I'm going, if I'm going to get, look, it looks like this. You're going to convict, probably. I'm going away for a while, and just let me go to the Renaissance Fair again. It was so fun last month. Yeah, everyone easy. was like, "Oh, we miss you. Where, where have you been?" And I was like, "Oh, I stole Nancy Pelosi's laptop, and I've had a, Oops. had an ankle monitor on. You can, it's still on here, actually. You can see it." And they're like, "Oh no, you're going to miss next month's Renaissance Fair." And I'm like, "Oh, well, I'll ask the judge if I can go." And she did, and the judge was like, "You know what? Fine. 
You know, have fun out there, kid. You are not a flight risk. Yeah. Because flying hasn't been invented yet. Yeah. And then she's also like, yeah, you know, like uh, the white race and, uh, you know, the fort. She's like literally a fucking Nazi. This is not a, she's not, you can't fix her. No, she's broken. Uh, she is racist and is going to jail. And uh, I don't think that she should get this. She's already been once. Why does she need to go again? But uh, who knows? I don't know. It's, I mean, it's a different Ren fair, So maybe they Oh, have... okay. She's doing a whole tour. I think they should, uh, the ju- if I was the judge, I'd be like that judge on King of the Hill, the creative judge. I'd be like. You can go down to that rent fair, but you're going to be in those stocks all day long. <laughs> They'll be throwing <laughs> tomatoes at you. <laughs> Which is yeah. not accurate because the tomato is a new world vegetable. They would not have had tomatoes during the actual renaissance. And definitely not enough of them to waste throwing them on convicts locked up in them stocks. <laughs> a delicacy like a tomato <laughs> wasted on common, common thieves? Ugh. Anyways, let's move on. NFT expert imagines a hopeful future where poor people serve as real-life NPCs in games. <laughs> this is so... like, It's like they're reinventing reality uh, but and still being evil. Yeah. It's like, what if, we, what if reality was exactly the same, except virtual, but I also get to treat people like shit and hire poor people to do everything? Yeah, that's the one thing that VR is missing is I don't have, like, baristas... And, uh, you know, check out people. I don't have minions that I can yell at with impunity Mm -hmm. and call the manager on. So, yeah, this is a, it's not even, it's not only an evil idea, but it's also like a fucking stupid idea. It's like, games already have NPCs. Like, his idea is like, oh, but like now it's a real person who is like mopping the floor or whatever. For and, hours. Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> just to what be, difference, appear what in difference someone else's it experience. It's, it's all just so that the person playing knows that when they're yelling at them, they're yelling at a real person and not just yelling at the wall, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible work. But uh, yeah, great pitch. We'll see how that, uh, that works out. Mm-hmm. I wonder why no one likes these people. <laughs> Food delivery robot rolls through L.A. crime scene in viral video <laughs> as confused cops look on. <laughs> what could we do to stop it? Nothing. Yeah, this is like, uh, it was a shooting outside the, the Hollywood High School, the one with the, the sheiks. Yeah. Um, and and uh, a famous skateboarding spot. Yeah. Uh, this little, like, Uber Eats robot. I think they're just testing it. I don't think they're, like, actually available in L.A. yet, but... Uh, it rolls right underneath a bunch of crime scene tape and yeah. just like down the sidewalk. <laughs> all, all, there's like, you know, any LA crime scene, there's like 200 cops there. And yeah. so they're all just like, what the fuck? Just leaving a blood trail behind <laughs> it, just right through just like giant. a blood splatter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just destroys the evidence. No, there's nothing like just, that. But, uh, <laughs> like a, someone's leaned over investigating like a body and it just bumps into them and they fall into it. Yeah. Yeah. Anything could happen. Anything. With that, they had to start putting police tape down low for the robots. Yeah. Yeah. Eminem scores number one on Billboard Christian Songs chart. How? How is this possible? Um, he's Christian now. No, he, uh, so... Like ICP did I 10 years ago? DJ Khaled released a new album, and on it is a remix of a Kanye West song from the Jesus is, uh, is Lord album. It was Jesus, whatever, that one from a couple years ago, the one that everyone hates. Um, and it's, I guess, technically a gospel song. But on the remix... Uh, Eminem ha- does a uh, does a verse, but it has no no swearing and no. He does make reference, like I mean the lyrics are topical, but yeah, I don't think he I don't think he swears. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's also <laughs> DJ Khaled's Muslim, so it's just very like uh, you know, got Kanye who loves Jesus, DJ Khaled remixing this who uh, does not accept Jesus as his Lord, and then you got Eminem who I don't think gives a shit about religion. And I think uh, I think Dre also produced. Uh, I don't know. It's uh, you're handed a perfect example of uh, religious peace, and you are mocking it, sir. I guess I don't believe you. This is unreal. Questioning it when you should just be saying it's good that these people came together. I listen to this track, and I'm like, when you when you say gospel, I picture a certain like type of music, but like I, I'm picturing gospel from like the 50s and 60s. I listen to this track. I'm like, I don't know. It just sounds like a fucking Kanye song. You're thinking um, of the Blues Brothers, uh, multiple scenes. Yeah. Yeah. I, when I picture gospel, I picture about 30 people in robes. Yeah. Uh, clapping. clapping and singing along. Yeah. yeah. And singing in a, a very special way where it's not super, it's not like tight. It's not rigid like a choir. It's uh, it's fun. Some of them are stepping out. Loose. To do, yeah. do their own like lines here or there. Yeah. It's a great time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this didn't remind me of that. So I think it's, I think the Christian chart, it's literally just, if the song's about Jesus, genres be damned. Look, now a lot more people know about this Christian chart. Yeah. So 
Eminem can be saved. <laughs> Finally, something that's not Hillside on our top ten list. Yeah. Brothers who haven't spoken in 30 years, both running for mayor of Ontario Town. <laughs> Is this uh, Doug Ford and uh, his brother? No, his brother died. I know. <laughs> No, this is, uh, I don't know. This is the guy, it's the incumbent who's been mayor for like years. I don't know why him and his brother haven't talked, but I, I assume it's some pretty, pretty dark shit between the two of them. 30 mm-hmm. years is a long time. Yeah. And his brother, who uh, still lives in the same town, was like, you know what? I'm sick of uh, having to hear about my brother being mayor this whole time. What has he done for us? Yeah. I'm going to take him on. So it's very exciting. A little sibling rivalry to uh, spice up the uh, election season. I love to see it. Yeah. This is fun. Mm -hmm. May the best brother win. Yes. Whoever, uh, whichever one of them pitches uh, Canadian hero Nathan Fielder on the money instead of of King Charles. There's some like John Candy on the money. There's so many good Canadians. Jim Carrey. Mike Myers. uh, Neil Young. Yeah, Mike Myers. The Trailer Uh, Park Boys. uh, Letter Kenny. Honestly, the list goes on and on and on. Kenny and Spenny. Canada is a, a net exporter of talent. But not Drake. The, Canada, much like England yeah. uh, and the UK in general, um, very talented, very talented in the arts, but Canada's got a trick up their sleeve. They mostly sound like us already. They don't have yeah. to go to the dialect coach. Yep. Except it does come through sometimes. That Justin Bieber, he, he pulled the wool over Put all Eugene right. Levy on the, on the money. Yeah. Captain oh, I think that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of great Canadians. Lots of great Canadians. Uh, yeah, guys, ditching the monarchy is a tremendous opportunity right now. Comedy is your greatest export. It really is. Yeah, Jim Carrey. SCTV. Well, that was Chicago, wasn't it? Uh, no, the, the the second city started in Chicago, but the SCTV was a Canadian oh, TV there show. There we go. Christopher Guest was uh, part of that. W- w- wasn't... Uh, uh, not Upright Citizen Brigade. What was the other one? Strangers with Candy. Was Kid, that Canadian? Kids in the Hall. Kids in the Hall. I believe they're Canadian as Kids well. Kids in the Hall. Damn. Damn. They, but they immediately what leave. What a country. They fucking leave that country as fast as possible. Yeah. Plus all the gamers. There's so many fucking Canadian gamers. Yeah. They just leave Canada. And what's left? Just two brothers fighting over mayor. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. Denny Villeneuve. Canadian. Oh, there's an infinite amount of options that you have to work <laughs> with here. Um, we're just giving you some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Think amongst, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, the entire band Rush. Eh. I mean, a lot of people love them. I'm not. Well, you're not Canadian. Not a Canadian. Doesn't yeah. do. Your tax same. dollars didn't pay for them. Yeah. Yeah. Pizza Hut announces Italian taco to rival Taco Bell's <laughs> Mexican pizza. Ah, uh, uh, cool. What's in the taco? The it's same a, exact thing? It's a dumb publicity stunt. They, yeah. they released like a PR statement and it's like, you, until you get to like halfway down it, they're like, so here's what it is. Uh, you take a slice of pizza on pizza and you fold it. That's a, that's the Italian taco. Shut up. Yeah. And we just lost the Choco Taco. We don't need to be making up a bunch of random ones. And they're like calling out Taco Bell, but they're both owned by the same company. It's yes. all just, uh, it's just funny. I just, I... I just find it very funny that people love the Mexican pizza from Taco Bell so much. Nostalgia. It it's literally, literally is a staple of your entire life I, when you're of college age. I mean, everything they sell is using the same ingredients. Yeah, it's just different so, variations and, and I feel like a taco is an easier way to eat it than the No, Mexican it's a knife pizza. and fork. It's for, uh, you know, those of us who like to dine with, <laughs> with utensils instead of our yeah, hands, yeah. Elliot. It's for a date night. <laughs> The Mexican pizza is what you bring home when you've been in trouble. Yeah. You show up with a Mexican pizza and it's everything's fine. Pop open the red wine, baby. We mm-hmm. got the Mexican pizza. Make sure it's red wine, though, so it pairs with the yeah. shredded beef. No, you this. open white wine. Oh, you can't. No, it's not going to pair right with the Mexican pizza from Taco mm-hmm. Bell. Do they even have fish at Taco Bell? No. Don't think so. They recently added breakfast, and I can't. It's, uh, when they added breakfast, I did have, uh, well, this is years ago. They had the waffle taco. Yeah. Uh, and it had like, it was, it was pretty good. But it was just a waffle that you folded in half, much like the yeah. Italian pizza. Oh, it's a taco. Anything's a taco if you fold it in half, huh? Yeah. I guess I've been eating Italian tacos this whole time because that's how you eat fucking pizza. At least real no. pizza. Maybe not Maybe not Pizza Hut. If you use a knife and fork. Well, anyway. <laughs> Armed man in clown wig arrested at Delmont Dairy Queen wanted to restore Trump to President King. <laughs> it's another one that like could have gone very badly. This man was armed to the teeth. And uh, yeah, yeah, he, he was uh, pretty pretty serious. But luckily, so far, uh, the people crazy enough to uh, you know go to war for Trump are also really bad at it. 
So, um, yeah. But this guy showed up at the Dairy Queen with a... Because it was the only thing that represented a monarchy for him yeah. uh, close by. Dairy Queen. Queen uh, of England. So, and Trump is king. He will own all Dairy Queens. And Burger Kings. Well, actually, Melania will own all Dairy Queens. Trump will be the new Burger King. Um, yeah. And that's why I have to put on this uh, rainbow Afro wig and go down to the Dairy Queen with three guns. Um that you know, the, the wig was for the insanity defense. This is where this is where Hi. the revolution starts. <laughs> At the Dairy Queen. Norman. Norman. Good. Come here. Boy, you're so bad. Avalanche of sex toys spill out on the highway after a truck flips over. Uh, but if we, you were there, you had a great day. The the news helicopter footage is so funny because they're like it's live, and the, the anchor in the studio is like, well, can you tell what's like what that is spilled out all over the highway? The guy in the helicopter is like, I don't know. It's uh, and they, like they zoom in, and like it gets to a point where you still conceivably it could be anything, but like if you know what you're looking at, it's definitely just thousands of dildos and like uh, fake asses and those like pink vibrators that every uh, viral Twitter account, uh, every viral Twitter post has like uh, in the replies. Like, if you like this tweet, you're going to love this vibrator. Because the vibrator company just DMs everyone who gets a viral tweet. It's like, I'll give you $20 to post this. <laughs> uh, so it's those. And those are very distinctive looking. I, it would have been a lot funnier if it was like full-size real dolls or like big yeah. asses. <laughs> oh, my God. looks like there's dozens there's of jiggly victims. jiggly asses like after it falls. <laughs> People have been dismembered. <laughs> there's hundreds dead. <laughs> hundreds dead. Uh, oh, everything's fine. Also, I wasn't... I, it sounds like lube also spilled onto the highway, and but I don't know if any of it like actually what spilled on the highway because that would be very funny. Like every cop car coming to the scene just like just tries to stop and then just spins out, careens <laughs> into a bunch of fake asses. <laughs> Amazing. Cover the highway with lube. Just create chaos. Amazing. All right, well that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Uh, Norman, thank you for being a good boy for like seventy five percent of the time. Mm, Very yeah. kind of you. We have to work on those those stats. Well, everyone likes seeing a dog on camera, so it's all better now, isn't it? You can't be mad at the puppy or, by proxy, the Not puppy's caretakers. Yeah, uh, specifically you, the owner. How can you call three boys like this disrespectful of the queen's sovereignty? Exactly, you can't. And with that, we will never talk about her again. Never. For, I promise this time. Unless, unless something insane unless something happens. Crazy, unless Joe Biden, like, poops his pants again. Luckily, I'm wearing my diapers. Yeah. <laughs> they Go were on. almost out down to the local Wegmans, but I got the last pair. I love that, like, immediately the Dark Brandon subreddit would turn that into a thing where he, like, because of his mom. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's shit in front of the queen. This one's for the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the queen it was me. Yeah. Anyways, that is it for our show. If you haven't seen it already, uh, we have a, a marathon episode of News Dump with pretty much every Longest story. Longest News we, Dump ever, I yeah, think. <laughs> with everything that we didn't cover yeah. so far this week. Uh, so check that out. And also a recent episode of Tech News Day, where, of course, Instagram's trying to be TikTok and failing. Watch those. Subscribe to the show to make up for the people that left because we made fun of the queen. And we'll see you soon. And God save the king. Actually, plus the join button. That'll really show everyone. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye.